Hi, uh, welcome to this week's short uh, tutorial, demonstration, whatever way you want to look at it. Um, I'm Howard Jones and I've decided I'm going to create something fairly simple here um, in that the design of this is very, very simple. We have this sort of abstract half oval shape here joined by this bridge over the water over this canal um, against a strong vertical on the left so it's quite a nice quite a nice composition there I want to play off the uh, colors that make up the shapes in the waters particularly the tonal values of those so I'm just going to go straight for this so most of this is going to be brushwork. It's that sort of, it's such a strong shape, such a strong design that most of this is going to be um, the work of the paintbrush. So I see the area where the bridge over the water is about here. Um, I'm very wary of reflections like that in the water of a bridge. They can be quite tricky on occasions. Well, they can for me. I find them quite tricky. Um, this is almost like a mini suspension bridge. So there are these cables cable lines that seem to be holding, suspending the uh, the weight of the bridge itself there. And then there's this vertical. I'm, I'm not going to suggest that the vertical is all building, though a lot of it is. There's a, a massive uh, willow tree that pops down like this from here. So I'm going to probably f find some textures that suggest that that is what we're looking at. Some some sort of willow trees are that have that very special characteristic of lots of um, you know hanging verticals to the shape. So the opposite. Um, so that's my left hand side. Pretty simple. That's my bridge. Again, pretty simple. There's some things going on behind which perhaps we'll uh, hint upon just above the top of the bridge there. Um, and then this is really just a mixture of abstract um, varying degrees of tonal value. So see what we can get achieved in this. I'll keep the sky fairly straightforward. We'll have a flat wash up here. We'll have it cool at the top, I think, and then warm it up warm it up as we come down into the sky. Uh, it, yeah, the lower part of the sky, I mean, sorry. So this is just a colour called Antwerp Blue. It has a slight greeny uh, tinge to it. <laughs> so Antwerp Blue by Winsor & Newton. So at the base of the sky down here, just going to warm it up with some raw sienna. And I'll take that raw sienna. This has got to be done wet in wet. So you've got to catch the first, the initial wash at the top there while it's still very, very much wet. And I'll see if I can get a, a dryish white line across the um, lever white line somewhere where the top of the bridge is around there. And it's very important, there's something I'm terribly guilty of myself, is forgetting to paint through a bridge. When you get, when you create a, um, this, I don't know, it's like almost like a window through the bridge, isn't it? Um, I, I often sort of paint everything and then suddenly realize that I really should have used colors that I've been using elsewhere through the bridge. And then when I do, when it does occur to me and I'm trying to get those colors in the background, it, it often looks wrong. So I'm just being careful, mindful, not to make that mistake this time. Now, um, 
it immediately turns blue here. So once again, a bit of Antwerp blue here, like this, and down here. So more or less make it, taking all the water into account, apart from the reflections of the bridge and some areas over here on the right hand side. So, and then a little bit of raw sienna to warm up areas that will really are the, just a reflection off the bank. So they travel up through here, something like this. And looking at the reflection in the photo, it is very similar. I would say it's made up mostly of the two colors I've just been using, which is, just to repeat, um, Antwerp blue and raw sienna. I just want to make good this area here. Seems to be a, a vertical reflection about here. I'm being careful not to leave white bits of paper in the wrong places. So this is a much, these, this area here is something I can be getting on with that next because and it's just a few large, rather nice trees here. So my greens are both warm and cool. So Antwerp blue, raw sienna. Raw sienna offers the warmth, of course. And the Antwerp blue keeps things, keeps other areas of that tree cool. So the cooler areas might be down in the areas that we might consider to be in shadow or shade like this. That, there's a lovely dark runs over the grassy bank down here. Something like this. This is a, a very large mop brush that I'm using. Seems to be some sort of path about here, something like that. So we might need to leave a little bit of light just here popping through. And we'll bring in a little bit of raw sienna, and maybe a little bit of uh, a colour called quinacridone gold, just to show some sunlight here. Like that. And that glimmer of that slightly brighter quinacridone gold at the very tops of those of that tree here. Um, while I've got this paint on the brush, I can make my downward brush marks for the willow tree here. And although we always think of um, trees and greenery as being the color green, there's a lot of yellow in, um, in natural greens. So, that's, I'm going to have some fun over here, I think, just piling in paint and water on top of each other. A little bit of that Antwerp uh, blue will bring the greens in. Like this. And uh, for all of you that watch my... Um, the, these uh, YouTube videos on a regular basis, you'll know that I like to paint rapidly. I sort of find it, I, I sort of paint my thoughts as soon as they arrive in my head and don't question them. I don't tr try to avoid doubt. It's not to say I don't have disastrous paintings from time to time. I do, just like everyone else. Um, but I prefer to work that way and have the odd disaster than to c continuously see um, f paintings that I'm not happy with, that I'm just not happy with. E even my disasters, I've had such fun painting them, that overrides the um, fact that it might not be my best painting. It's the actual process of the painting for me um, that does it, that, that, that keeps me painting. So 
I'm always ready to f uh, uh, sacrifice the odd painting because it, for, for the sheer enjoyment of painting it the way I paint it. So, okay, there's this area under the bridge again. Seems to be a reflected shape just about here. Probably off that tree we can see up there against the sky. Somewhere around there, actually. I don't, yeah, that's not, it's not essential that, that that's painted exactly as is. Um, I do like to place, um, use this technique of um, bringing a vertical brush stroke down in my reflections like this. So this is a flat brush and with a little bit of moisture in the brush I would just pull the paint down like this while there's still a bit of moisture, as I say, in the area, in, on, the paint, on the paper surface. Now, I think now's the time to go in with this reflection of the bridge. So, I think I'm gonna dry brush it mostly. So it goes something like, hang on, just a bit of raw sienna and Antwerp blue. getting the brush right it's so it, it's so essential to get the brush loaded correctly now I haven't got the exact color that's in the photo but, but I'm not sure that that worries me too much again I'm using a, a vertical brush mark in my forthcoming, some of my forthcoming um, videos, I, I want to talk more about and demonstrate more to you folks about the um, how important good brushwork is, brush craft, you know, even down to the drying it in between mixes and um, just getting that ratio of paint to water correct each time. So let's go turn our attention to the bridge, sticking with this slightly larger round brush, um, sticking with the same colours. So I, I will put a little bit of ultramarine blue in this one instead of the Antwerp blue, but um, with the raw sienna again. Uh, just does seem to be a little bit cooler along the bottom of this bridge shape. So that might call for a little bit of cobalt blue. So there it is. It's a very watery cobalt blue mixed with those other colors that I just mentioned. Being careful here not to make contact with areas I think that might still be wet. And I'm just, as I mentioned earlier, I paint my ideas and thoughts as they happen. So it's always a gamble. It's always that. I love the excitement of whether that idea that enters your head is going to work or not. T to me, I, again, I, I think that's more important to me. It's worth the gamble. You can't be certain, unless you've done it a lot of times, of course. If you've done something, the same thing over and over, then it's not a gamble anymore. You know it's going to work or it's not going to work, so you don't do it. But the most of the time, we're painting on the fly. Well, I, I, I do. Uh, I paint on the fly, as it were. You know, you, you, um, you paint your ideas as and when they enter your head. And... Uh, and, and sort of hope for the best, I suppose. <laughs> I love that. I really love that aspect of painting this way. I wonder if it'll work if I bring in a little sort of scraping tool here. This is my palette knife. I don't want to get too clever over here because of course it's the, um, it's the side of the painting, an area that shouldn't get too much attention. 
So we might leave that like it is for the moment. Um, if, I, if I'm really careful now, I can rest my hand down here because this is still a bit damp. So I'm going to pick up some ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. A bit of cadmium red, actually. I'm looking at um, the top of the structure of the bridge. It's quite ornamental, it seems. So I might just put something, uh, 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 an orange-like colour there for a moment. Very dry, sticky paint. And um, it just seems to be a sort of pattern that I'm picking up on a warm colour in the top of that bridge. I'll have to go over this with um, something darker in a moment too. So this bridge, top of this bridge area becomes a mix of um, warm shapes, dark shapes, little bits of the white paper maybe even is required in, in the odd place. and just pop a couple of hard, uh, sorry, not hard, dark shapes in one or two of these spots on the bridge. If something's a bit heavy, I often do this, I, I just run a finger into it carefully So I think there's something you have to develop. If you are going to sort of um, try this method of painting very quickly, um, there's certain things you've got to develop alongside. And that is what I'm, things I'm doing now. If, if I, I, I sort of know that I can go a little bit daring. I can get a bit daring, you know, um, uh, knowing that if I, if I rub it over with my finger carefully, I, I can knock it back to some degree of um, to, of getting it where I want it, but you do. I think you do have to be. You have to take risks. You really do have to take risks. So there's an area along this path. Here there in the odd place uh, there are buildings just the evidence of a building up here there's a window in there so let's see if we can leave a suggestion of a window or two there We can mix over the top, over the roof, with some warmth into it. So just pick up a bit of, a little bit of cad, cadmium red. Perhaps a bit of cadmium yellow, just to suggest, perhaps that quinacridone gold that we've used down here. I'll just deliver it there for the moment and then distribute it like this. Okay. And same over here, there seems to be this very warm dark. Seems to, I, I would guess that something like a lot of burnt sienna with a bit of, um, with a bit of ultramarine blue would, would, would suffice. I don't, I don't feel the need, in the photo there's quite a bit of that face of the building is exposed. Not sure whether that's what I want for my painting. We'll just hint upon a little bit of warmth there, I think. Let's have some Putting in a little bit of alizarin crimson now into those warm darks. Just 
brings a little more life to them. And then the edge that I leave up here, of course, is the top of my willow tree. Sorry, just let my cat out of the room here. Just a little hint of something on the side there, a window or something, part of the structure. Um, now that that's dry, what I did over the top of the bridge, I'm just going to run water through most of it. Careful not to disrupt the paint, the shapes that I made, but the water will soften a lot of that, a lot of those shapes that I applied. Like this. Okay, I'm going to put the these ropes or whatever they are, cables rather. I think they're probably something a bit more substantial than a rope. So, so here's my here are my cables going across here. I got the pencil, the underlying pencil marks that I made when I when I drew all this out. That's that's okay. I mean, I can really just adjust those, get rid of those when the painting's dry. So a little bit of embellishment here and there. Just going to go behind. Just going to texture a few of these trees and green areas now. And um, and that'll be more or less the finished job. So if I make a little bit more of what's going on in the background, I can show the top of that this bridge off a bit better. So very weak phthalo blue with very weak. It might look dark, but this is going to dry out uh, with a very weak raw sienna. Seems to be another little building down here. So let's te put some darker textures in to um, my green areas. So raw sienna, Antwerp blue, a little bit of alizarin crimson in this will darken the colour. So I'm just going in now, making absolutely sure I'm happy with the tonal exchanges throughout the painting. Sometimes when you want to, when you want a bit of extra depth in a t in a tonal area in a dark area, you really have to go to the opposite color, the complementary color that you're using. So in other words, if you're this being a very green area, to get any real dark there, you you need to pick up a, a red, and not just any red. You're probably better off most of the time using a a transparent red like um, alizarin crimson, um, because that will keep the That'll keep things just a bit cleaner. Uh, it'll avoid you going into that muddy territory that we all know. Transparent colours will help you to reduce the amount of mud. You, sorry, using transparent options will help keep you out of the muddy territory. 
the opaque colours tend to sort of push us into muddy areas. Okay, I think we're nearly there. So the reason why I'm looking at this side for a bit of extra dark is just for some cohesion from left to right, from the from the left side of the paint into the right and vice versa. Let's just run a little bit of ripple in one or two areas here. Got to be careful not to get too bogged down now with, with this detail. I think I'm just checking it over the painting for uh, hard edges, soft edges. Is the ratio right? Which I always think I always think is at 70-30 ratio. You know, um, it de if depends on what the surface is that the the shadows and things are actually falling on, but um, the rule of thumb is this. If your shadowy areas, your dark areas are um, on hard surfaced objects like buildings, walls, things like that, um, then they really, you really should be looking at 70% hard edge, 30% the remaining whatever, uh, soft edge. If you're dark areas are, are over trees and foliage and that sort of thing, then most of those edges are going to be the opposite. 70% soft edges and 30% um, hard edge. So... I think we'll leave it like that. I'm just going to bring a little bit of um, white gouache into the mix. I'm just going to add a little bit of spice colour to an area that I think needs it and that's around here. Just scumbling that little bit of um, uh, quinacridone gold just, just here. So my final thoughts are going to take a bit of white gouache um, I love the spattering at the end of a painting with white gouache, particularly in these sort of scenes. Um, so I'm painting with my finger now. Uh, um, sorry. Uh, yeah, a bit of white gouache, particularly in these uh, scenes with water because of all this sort of airborne um, fauna and flora that you'd expect to find. Um, as I say, sort of airborne things that we tend to feel rather than we see. But by ap applying them to your painting, for the viewer, we add that extra little bit of um, that extra experience, perhaps that extra sense. We're tapping into the, the that, that extra, extra sort of sense. Perhaps the cause of birds even sometimes. Um, right, so... may just be that one or two of those verticals are catching the light. Let's put the mount round it and have a look. Okay, this has been one of those uh, rare occasions where I actually paint quite close to the source reference, the photograph. Um, I don't do that very often, if I'm honest. I prefer to paint from, um, you know, with as much invention and creativity as possible. Sorry, I'm moving this mount around here, trying to find the best pitch, the best crop. So, so why don't I do it? Why don't I do for you a, a, a crit of my painting, a critique here, um, which I think is always. 
I would do anyway. So, um, so my thoughts are there may just be a little bit too much of this willow tree shape here and that it might be better if it was cropped, not by much, but perhaps by an inch from this right hand side. Um, mostly the rest of the painting I'm sort of okay with. I do wonder whether I could have gone a little bit darker with the reflection of the bridge. Um, and um, that's easily put right, you know, I, I can sort of simply replicate the colour fairly easily because I know, it's, I can remember the colour was uh, Antwerp blue and burnt uh, and uh, raw sienna. Um, and I could just perhaps indicate just a little bit more depth in places, darker, slightly darker colour. May just require a bit of extra dark from a bit of a alizarin crimson and um, just rest the, the, the paint on the paper for a moment there. Then I squeeze everything out of this brush like that and make like a pan shape, a paddle I should say, sorry paddle shape because it's now flat this round brush is now flat and thirsty and then I would um, just run it run that vertically through those marks that I just delivered I use this term a lot delivery and distribution um, it really I think it really helps and makes a, a, a one difficult part of the job a bit easier so you, you don't worry too much about the shape that you first applying you deliver the the correct mix and that is strength tonal strength and temperature color temperature you deliver it roughly to the area that you want to work in usually central in other words if we, if we were looking at that area there with the knowledge that at some point it's got to go darker and it's got to have texture in it you deliver this somewhere central and then with a brush cleaned off, sometimes with water, some just water, and sometimes with a weak paint of a different colour in it, I will then choose to distribute that delivery to uh, uh, to make shapes. So, sort of delivery, distribution, that those two things. Anyway, back to the critique here. So I'm sort of happy with it, I suppose, most mostly. Um, it's... It's probably a little bit busy that, busier than I'd intended. Um, it's not, strictly speaking, backlit. And if I wanted a, a far less busy scene, if I wanted to make the scene less busy, I would have um, chosen not to go with the lighting conditions of the photograph because they're definitely, they seem to be coming from the right-hand side. Um, to simplify this whole scene, if I'd have gone more silhouette-like, backlit, contrajour, um, then it, it wouldn't look so busy. There'd be a lot more flatness to it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one, folks. If you want more of these, as I say, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, hit the bell icon. Please also, if you'd be really kind, share. Um, hit that little share thingy at the bottom of the screen there and send it on to friends and, uh, and, and colleagues. And... Um, and uh, I, uh, I'd be most grateful and I hope that you are here for the next one.